guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and while I'm having my morning coffee this morning I thought I would take a minute to look at a couple of books that I've picked up recently. Fish books of course. Um, I know that many people think print is dead but to me there's just something really special and magical about holding a book, about being able to put bookmarks in to come back to reference things. I enjoy writing, I enjoy looking through books and you know the digital just doesn't do it for me. So I was really excited when Ivan McColgy reached out to me and offered me his book, Fishes in the Orinoco. Um, now, Ivan has a YouTube channel and a pretty healthy social media presence, which I can link to you guys below. Um, I'm not being paid for this, though I was sent the book for free. And I was really intrigued because I feel like a lot of our philosophies are very similar about keeping fish in a natural environment, um, about grouping fish based by geographic region. And my understanding of this book is that it's basically like species spotlights of the fishes of the Orinoco in book form. So I think that's really cool. Um, and he has spent he's done over a hundred expeditions into the wild and takes some really incredible photography and has some great sponsors in that regard. So I thought we would just take a look um, at the book. You see, this is all the various places he's explored. Um, let's just skip to, oh look, there's a Pirulina. This is a fish that often is considered like a junk fish and you just don't see a whole lot about it. So it's pretty cool. It's in here and you can see in this that it has an overview of the fish, how it behaves, um, its etymology, its distribution, its size, temperature, pH, and fish that it is found alongside of, which is especially useful if you're trying to set up some sort of biotope. These pictures are phenomenal. It's not just little fish, it's all fish. Look at those quarries, wow. Um, and I really encourage you guys, if you're, you're into things like this, to invest in good quality books like that. It supports the people putting in the work. And it also um, is great, are those Kedostomas? Those are so cool, these guys are really neat. I used to work with those. Um, just supports the people that are putting in the time and energy to give us this information from firsthand knowledge. You know, not, not a lot of people are doing this quality of work. So I think it's really cool. Look at those epistos. Mm. Anyway, uh, this book is well, well worth it. I can't wait to dive into it more um, and talk to Ivan more in the future because this is absolutely phenomenal. And you also, with all these underwater pictures, you get a really great idea of what the habitats actually look like in order for us to set up our aquariums better and see especially like what the substrate is, the color of the water, if there's plants, if there's leaf litter. Um, and it can give you a lot of clues about how they eat as well and breed. So it's, it's super fascinating. And I think this is a really fantastic book. The next book is one that I purchased myself. It's called the Bashir Handbook. Uh, it was advertised to me on Facebook. I'm a sucker. Um, and you guys know my favorite fish of all times uh, is my Polypterus endlicheri. Um, so it's not shocking that I'm, I'm into this. It's got a cool little bookmark that has all the different species on it. And it looks like a poster. Let's take a look at that. Oh, that's cool. This is a chart of the different species and their max sizes, it looks like. And here is the family tree. Very neat. You know, with, with such uh, niches as both um, polypterus and fish from specific regions, it's it's unusual to find really good books about them, but both of these seem really great. Um, this Bashir one has a lot of information. It's got their sizes, where they're found, um, pictures of the habitat, pictures of captive bred, issues on care, or uh, advice on care. 
And what's kind of cool is it has for, for scale a picture of an angel throughout <laughs> the book, which is kind of funny. It's got breeding reports, which is really cool. Um, talks about food and its importance. It's a very thorough book. Uh, has nutritional data on a lot of the things that we commonly feed them, like raw shrimp, vitamin requirements, um, how their camouflage can change. So if you're interested in keeping this fish, I would encourage you to get this book. It was pretty expensive, but I think it's absolutely worth it. Look at this. Natural habitat of Polypterus palmus. That is cool. Um, anyway, I just wanted to share with you guys. Again, this isn't sponsored. I just feel like uh, people who put in the effort to... This is cool. This is all the anatomy of the Polypterus. Um, people who put in the effort to really do the research on, on either of these types of things really deserve our support. I mean, writing is a labor of love. Sharing information in this format is... Um, you know, difficult in today's day and age, but I think it's still really valuable. You know, I have quite a collection of fish books. And if you guys like hearing about fish books, I'd be happy to do future coffee and books um, for you guys to go over some of the other books that I think are really, really valuable. Um, but this one is, is great. And the pictures in this one and the information you can get about fish and their species, the species they're found along, as well as the underwater footage absolutely phenomenal so thanks so much to them for sending me this book i mean this is this is like 400 pages of fish information that is insane and so cool um oh farluella love them anyway i hope everyone's staying safe and staying healthy i have a lot of videos coming out for you guys in the near future things are ramping up around here as always thanks for the continued support